Hi guys. This video is one of the first lessons from my recently released course in which I teach you how to go from beginner to pro in Premiere Pro. In it, I'll go over how to set up your workspace like a true professional and explain why it's so crucial to get everything set up correctly from the start. And if you want hours and hours of more content like this, then be sure to check out my full course. The link is in the description. Now let's join Teacher Finn for our first lesson. First things first, open up Premiere Pro. You can either open it through the Creative Cloud app or you can just pin it to your dock like me. If you want to pin it to the dock, open up Premiere Pro through the Creative Cloud app and then right click the app icon and click pin to taskbar. It's the same if you're on Mac. Right click, go into options and then click keep in dock. With Premiere open, you're gonna be greeted by a screen with two options in the top left. One for new project and the other for open project. As time goes on and you start to work on more projects, you'll see your past projects appear on this screen, starting from your most recently opened. But today, we're starting with a completely new project. Press the new project button. When you click the new project button in Premiere Pro, you'll be taken to this new screen. And there are gonna be a lot of options on this screen, but don't worry at all. All we want to do is focus on naming your project, which you can do up here in the top left section of the screen, right next to where it says project name. For now, I'm gonna call this test project number one. We're also gonna to want to select a safe space to save the project using the drop down box next to where it says project location. I advise choosing an internal hard drive. That way you can't physically lose your project and it's most likely gonna be a faster drive than an external one. Make sure that this location is properly named and easy to access. Proper file management is super important in content creation and will save you a few headaches in the future. Before we move on from this screen, it's worth noting that you can import footage here. However, I don't find this to be the quickest or easiest method of importing footage and media. And we'll go into importing my way in the next lesson. But for now, just head down here to the bottom right and click create. And that's it. You've created your first project. Congratulations. And here we are. Welcome to the main Premiere Pro workspace. This is where we're gonna be spending a whole lot of time. And for many of you, this will look like the Wild West, an unexplored region of possibilities with so many discoveries to be made. For others, you may have some familiarity with Premiere Pro already, and maybe even already have a layout suited to you. Today though, we're gonna start from scratch, and we're gonna create a new layout, a layout that I've refined over the years to save me time that I personally use while editing my projects. Before we dive in, let's make sure our project file has been saved correctly. I'm gonna close down Premiere Pro and go to my save location. And look at that, by double clicking the file, it takes us back to our project. So first things absolutely first, we're gonna make sure that we're making the most out of our hardware. Premiere is a software prone to crashing and anything that we can do to mitigate the chances of a crash is worth doing. With that in mind, if you're on Windows, go up here, press file and head into your project settings and then hit general and make sure that GPU acceleration is turned on. This will help with distributing the processing load between both the CPU and the GPU of your computer and will help you get a better overall performance out of Premiere Pro. For most people, this should already be selected, but if not, make sure it's turned on. And if you're using a MacBook using silicon architecture, this option won't be here as your computer is already optimized for this sort of work. Before we go on, it's worth talking about workspaces. Right now, we're either in the learning workspace or the editing workspace. The options for changing workspaces can all be found when you press this little icon here in the top right. Each workspace is designed to cater to different tasks. All they do is set your Premiere to a saved layout, which moves panels around and makes certain tools more accessible for different tasks. For now, we want to be in the editing workspace. There are four main panels in the edit workspace when you start. The bottom left is the project panel, and this is where we're gonna be spending most of our time at first as this is where we import all of our footage, our audio effects, and so much more. Above that is where you can preview imported footage in the source monitor. And later on, this is where we're gonna play around with our effects. In the bottom right, you'll find the timeline. Now this is where you're gonna cut up your footage and sequence, and where you will essentially construct your video. And above the timeline is the playback window, which will show you what your final video is currently looking like. Each of these panels contains various docs, which are different panels that do different things. On that note, if you have this panel here on the left-hand side, we're just gonna quickly close this because we're not gonna need it. 
for the rest of our time in Premiere Pro. Just click the three lines here and then click Close Panel. And that's a lot to take in, but across the hours we spend together on this course, you will come to know how to use all of these panels. Before we go on, I want us to quickly add a new dock to our workspace, the Effects Dock. This will allow us to have easy access to various effects like camera shakes and zooms within the editing workspace, which will become super useful later on. The Effects Dock by default should be here for most of you. If it's not for any reason, then we want to go up to Window and select Effects. This should then show the Effects Dock in one of your panels. It should be here. To move it to a more desirable place, we click on these three lines here and select Undock Panel. This then makes the Effects Dock a freeform panel, meaning you can move it anywhere you want, even to a second monitor if you wanted. But for this course, we'll put it right here next to Effect Controls. Drag the Effects Dock by the name right over to where the Effect Controls Dock is. You will see many areas start to light up blue over where your mouse is. It's important that you drop the Effects Dock on the blue area in line with the other docks. This will add it nicely to the list of other docks in this panel. Now you may have picked up on the fact that I've mentioned how Premiere Pro crashes a lot. So I'm gonna say something that I'm gonna repeat time and time again. Save your work. Always save your work. For the love of all you hold dear, make sure that you're saving all the time. The easiest way to save is simply by pressing Control and S on Windows or Command and S on Mac. That's the shortcut to save your project. And let me repeat that. Control and S on Windows, Command and S on Mac. Do it right now. Do that right, th right this second. This is the most important shortcut you will learn. And use it religiously because even when you have an amazing computer, Premiere Pro loves to crash. Right. Your workstation is looking pretty darn toot and good to me. And as long as we have these main panels on show, especially with the effects panel integrated, we're golden and we can move forward. Now let's get some footage in there and start editing. I think you're ready. Maybe. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're a beginner and you found that useful, then the link to the rest of the course is in the description. Thanks to everyone who's bought the course so far. The feedback has been amazing and I really hope you guys keep enjoying it.